2016 Aston Martin Vanquish S Review. From 195,950 pounds. 8 point. Late life changes make the Aston Martin Vanquish S even nicer to drive and put a bit of necessary air between it and the DB11. What is it? The Aston Martin Vanquish S is a necessary revision. Aston Martin's second century plan has just brought us the DB11 and very nice, so it is but it still has other cars for sale. You know what we used to say, sometimes they look a bit alike and do alike. Of them all, though, spare the biggest thought for the Vanquish, whose patch the DB11 encroached on most when it replaced the DB9. The Vanquish was Aston's most powerful series production model and flagship Super GT, and it needs to stay on sale and stay selling until its replacement arrives in 2019. Some at Aston feel it wasn't totally on message for the segment anyway. It was more GT than Super GT, says Aston. One problem is that the Vanquish's non-Aston rivals include the Ferrari F12, which is rather loud, rather urgent, and rather 731 bhp. So Aston has looked to inject a bit more super into the Vanquish's GT mix. A few tweaks, then. Given that they've got quite a lot else on, I don't know where they find the time, but here it is. Power is up from 565 bhp to 592 bhp, and while peak torque stays the same at 465 pounds foot, it's spread over a wider range. There are new exhausts and there's more carbon fiber on the outside, including bits that reduce frontal lift, and there are suspension alterations. I say tweaks, but even the smallest changes are rather in-depth. Front and rear springs are both 10% stiffer and rear roll stiffness is up by 3%, but that's not even approaching the half of it. The dampers have been retuned so that while the primary ride, body control, is much improved, the secondary ride, over small imperfections, doesn't take a hit. Then the engineers started talking through the compression and rebound damping alterations and your correspondent smiled bleakly and nodded helplessly. The upshot is that there's less understeer than before and the car feels more agile. The steering still hydraulic is said to offer better connection and a more progressive build-up in weight. Oh, and they've added an S to the name. What's it like? I haven't driven a Vanquish for a while, but I can tell there's more noise on startup. More all the time, in fact, from the 5.9 liter V12. The note is a bit more howly and hollow, although, in three hours at the wheel, I never found it tiring. I rather like it at a subtle 3000 RPM upshift or downshift actually all the revs you need on the road most of the time. Yes, the Vanquish is still down on the F12S power, but I can't imagine the circumstances in which 592 bhp is insufficient. Unlike the turbocharged V12 of the DB11, you do have to work the motor a bit to get a huge shove in the back, but it rewards the effort. The 8-speed auto is the same as before, but there's a new, firmer coupling between the engine and the prop shaft, the gearbox is at the back, which makes gear shifts feel much more urgent, positive, and although they aren't quicker. The chassis changes. Subtle, but real. The ride is composed and controlled, a little fidgety on pitted motorways and thumpy across cat's eyes, but not to an extent you'd complain about. There's a DB11 if you do. The steering is lovely, albeit delivered via a heavily squared wheel. These wretched things are the automotive equivalent of having your lunch served on a chopping board or slate which, as juices ooze onto the table, make you question what, precisely, was wrong with the less glamorous but infinitely superior plate. Still, once you've decided which one of its many sides to hold, the feel is great and it transmits messages about what turns out to be a lovely handling balance. This time of year is a surprisingly good one to test very fast cars, a road covered in more muck and grease than my lunch table the other day, chopping board, see, undoes the efforts to give a car mammoth grip and traction, which you'd never run out of in the dry, and makes a car's handling limits accessible at sensible speeds. Whereupon you find the Vanquish S has the ideal balance of the best recent Astons, settle the nose, 
enjoy the steering as you turn and feel the chassis come alive as you squeeze the throttle on the exit. It's a gorgeous thing to drive. Should I buy one? When the DB11 arrived, the Vanquish's case looked shakier than ever, but these revisions set it far enough apart to warrant a Super GT tag like it didn't before. Granted, if the DB11 teaches you anything, it's that old school Astons feel less gorgeous to sit in these days, but while the Vanquish S is aging, it's now doing it gracefully and there is enough in these changes to tide it over for another couple of years, dignity and appeal intact. Aston Martin Vanquish S. Location, Warwickshire. On sale, now. Price, £199,950. Engine, V12, 5,935 cubic centimeters, petrol. Power, 592 bhp at 7000 rpm. Torque, 465 pounds foot at 5500 rpm. Gearbox, 8 SPD automatic. Curb weight, 1739 kilograms. 0 to 62 miles per hour. 3.5 SEC. Top speed, 201 miles per hour. Economy, 21.6 mpg, combined. CO2 slash tax band, 302g slash km, 37%. Rivals, Ferrari F12, Porsche 911 Turbo S.